So I'm Professor Nigel Curtis. Well, I work across all three institutions on the Melbourne Children's Campus. I lead the Infectious Diseases Research Group at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. I'm a professor in the Department of Paediatrics at the University of Melbourne and I lead the Infectious Diseases team at the Royal Children's Hospital. The BRACE trial is designed to find out whether the BCG vaccine provides a means of protecting healthcare workers until disease-specific vaccines become available. Of course, I'm very pleased to see that there are some very promising vaccine candidates being developed, but of course it will take time for these to be available, probably more than a year or 18 months. We're hoping that the BCG vaccine will provide an interim measure to protect healthcare workers in the time that it will take to develop a disease-specific vaccine for COVID-19. The BCG vaccine was created nearly 100 years ago and it's used throughout the world still today to prevent tuberculosis. And in fact, over 130 million children um, are given this vaccine each year worldwide. Uh, the really interesting thing about the BCG vaccine is that it has what we call off-target effects to boost the immune system. What we now understand about this vaccine is that it enhances um, the innate immune system So when we're infected by a virus or a bacteria, the first part of the immune system that deals with this is called the innate immune system. And this involves um, specialized white cells in the bloodstream um, that include neutrophils and natural killer cells. And it's these cells that initially um, try and destroy viruses or bacteria. What we now understand is that um, BCG has the ability to change the way these um, white cells in the bloodstream um, respond to bacteria and viruses. There have been some very interesting experiments in adult volunteers. Um, in these experiments, um, adults have been challenged with the yellow fever virus vaccine. And it's been found that if um, those who have been given BCG before this challenge are able to reduce the level of this virus in their bloodstream much um, better than those who've not received the BCG vaccine. Starting a trial of this size is an enormous undertaking, and particularly when you're trying to do this fast in the face of a global pandemic. Um, fortunately, we've been working in this area for some time, so we already had assembled a large team of researchers with all the right skills. We started the BRACE trial in the Royal Children's Hospital, but I'm pleased to say that within weeks we were able to bring on board the Telthorn Kids Institute and also the South Australian Medical Research Institute, as well as other hospitals in Melbourne. So there have been a number of studies suggesting that the severity of COVID-19 in different countries in some way relates to the BCG use in those countries in children. However, I would urge caution in interpreting those studies because they are preprints, which means they've not been reviewed by experts in the field, and therefore there are a number of limitations. In particular, um, there are many other reasons why the severity differs between different countries relating to where they sit in the epidemic curve um, and also how much testing there's done in different countries. So these kind of studies can't really tell us whether BCG protects against COVID-19. It's only randomised clinical trials that can answer the question as to whether this vaccine can play a role in protecting healthcare workers and others who are particularly vulnerable to this virus. I'm often asked whether um, if someone has had BCG vaccine in the past they're protected against COVID-19 and the answer is we really don't know. However, I think it's unlikely that a BCG vaccine given many years earlier still has protective off-target effects. We are including those who've had the BCG vaccine in the past in our trial, and it will be interesting to find out whether those who've had it before also benefit from a further BCG vaccine at this time. It's very important that those who've had BCG vaccine before um, still use the precautions that we know work against COVID-19. So I encourage everybody to um, use frequent hand washing, to maintain social distancing, and of course for healthcare workers to use personal protective equipment when required. 
It's very important for me to emphasize that at this time, we don't yet know whether the BCG vaccine protects against COVID-19. And it really, no one should be um, having this vaccine outside of a clinical trial. We were very lucky to receive some very fast funding from some generous philanthropic funders. Uh, these included Sarah and Lachlan Murdoch, the Royal Children's Hospital Foundation and the Mindaroo Foundation in Western Australia. Although I'm the one sitting here, I would like to emphasise that behind me there is a very large group of people involved in this trial. And I've been so impressed by the way in which everyone has come together from the Research Institute to make this happen. It's a very large team of hardworking and dedicated researchers. I know that I speak on behalf of my whole team when I say we feel very privileged to be able to do something that might help our fellow healthcare workers throughout the world. We've been very distressed to see what is happening on the television screens. So we send our fellow healthcare workers on the front line our very best wishes.